All right, this is number six from 2008 BC exam, uh, and this is a this is a really good BC question. It's got a, a logistic differential equation, although you don't really use it um, in that sense, but it is logistic. Uh, it's got a slope field. It's got Euler's method, uh, Taylor polynomial. So uh, let's see what we can do. So here's the given slope field, and the first thing you have to do is draw um, solution curves that go through the two given points, uh, 0, 8, and 3, 2. So for 0, 8, uh, it's going to be a decreasing solution, and it's going to approach the limit. So I uh, did the best I could. And then uh, 3, 2, uh, you should try to have a point of inflection at 3, um, but that's really hard to do. So I'm going to go forward first. Uh, it approaches the limit. Um, so it's concave down after uh, y equals 3, or above y equals 3, I should say. Uh, and then I'm going to go backwards, um, and it, needs, it should be concave up until you get to 3. Um, y equals 3, though, not necessarily x equals 3. Um, definitely not x equals 3, in fact. Um, but anyway, that's all we have to do. Uh, not a big deal. So you should fly through that part. Uh, the next part is an Euler's method question. Um, so we have x, y, delta y. And then delta y is f prime of x, y, delta x. Um, we're supposed to use two equal si step sizes, so delta x will be 1 half in this case. Um, so fill in the point that you're given, which is 0, 8, um, and then don't forget delta x, and now we're plugging in. So uh, since this is a logistic differential equation, the equation only really has y in it. Um, so we evaluate, and we get uh, negative 1. So um, we have 1 half, because delta x is 1 half, and then 7, the 7 comes from combining 8 and negative 1, so that's our new y value, and we do it again. Um, so 1 half, we plug in the 7 for y, so 7 eighths, and then 6 minus 7, and evaluate this, we get negative 7 sixteenths, um, so we increment x to get 1, uh, this is our new y value, I'm not even going to simplify that, um, it's kind of early in the morning and I don't feel like it, So, but I got that by combining those, obviously, so uh, f of 1 is approximately 7 minus 7 sixteenths, you don't need to simplify that, so uh, that's our approximation, and that's Euler's method. The next thing is actually a Taylor polynomial, so we're supposed to use second degree. So that's going to be f of 0 plus f prime of 0, x minus 0 to the first over 1 factorial, plus f double prime of 0, x minus 0 to the second over 2 factorial. Um, now what we need to do is figure out the values uh, to plug in. So we need the second derivative. So that's going to be um, the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So that's the second derivative, but now we need values to plug in for y and dy dx. Um, dy dx we can figure out is negative 2. Um, y equals 8. We know that because uh, f of 0 is uh, given to be 8. So plugging these values in, um, we end up... This one you do want to simplify because you need to um, plug it in. So 5 halves is what you end up with. So let's write down the polynomial by substituting. Um, so f of 0 is 8, it's given. Um, f prime we figured out is negative 2. Um, f double prime, we just did the work. And we have that. And then we have to evaluate or approximate f of 1. So that's going to be uh, p of 2, uh, p2 of 1 rather. And we get that. And again, I'm not going to simplify that. Um, the next thing is uh, we're asked for the range of the solution um, that goes through 0, 8 when t is greater than or equal to 0. So greater than or equal to 0 wasn't given initially, um, but now it is. So we definitely know that at 0 it's equal to 8, so 8 is going to be in our range. It decreases toward the limit, but it doesn't get there. It's logistic. Um, so that's our range. So um, the 8 comes from the fact that it's the given initial condition. Um, the 6 comes from the fact that it's the limit. If you're actually in my class, the first thing you probably would have done when you saw logistic is rewrite it this way, um, where we know that the limit is sitting underneath that y, provided that that is a 1. Um, but anyway, this was a, a really good BC level question. Uh, it covered a lot of things, and uh, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.